What's up guys, my name is Chris and today I'm showing you guys five ways to get better keyframes in EVSIM. Because without good keyframes, we ain't getting a good video. So let's get into it. Now the first tip I have for you guys is a wide shot. A wide shot a lot like this one right here works wonders for EVSIM. Because if we had it punched in my face right here and I started moving around, the whole frame would be changing constantly. We'd have to have a dozen or more keyframes on it just for it to look somewhat decent and even then it really wouldn't. So by having a wide shot here, you give yourself a lot more leverage in post because then you can EVSIM the whole thing and then punch right into the face or the hands or track it onto my chest or something like that. And that leads directly into point number two, which is 4K or the highest resolution that your camera can shoot at, shoot at that. It's gonna make your render times a lot longer, but it gives you more flexibility, more detail, more clarity and more just fine nitty gritty details that you can look at and make it look all beautiful, beautiful. But 4K is where it's best at for effects and stuff like this because it gives you more clarity, more detail that you can just bend the image just that little bit more, or in this case, four times more, and it just gives you a lot more leniency in post, which I personally love. Especially with something like EVSynth where you need all the available detail possible because that machine learning just uses everything to figure out where these next little smudges or frames are gonna be at. And coming from point number two, right here we have don't smear. What is smearing you say? Well, there isn't really a technical definition because I just made this up because I don't know what to actually call this. But smearing is essentially what happens whenever you bring something in front of your already EV synth subject. So say for example, the old Captain America effect, I had this problem because I started the keyframe like this, but shortly after that, I brought my hand across and fixed my hair, but that smeared the face across because I wasn't sure if the hand was part of the face, so it attracted a little bit more. So the face, although it was right here, was oblong, smeared, and crushed up a little bit. So my eye was really where my forehead was, my chin was talking, and my teeth were like in my cheek. It was really weird, really messed up. And in the same way, whenever you like look sideways, and then you look forward, it doesn't have any frame of reference for this, which is actually point two point five right there. You gotta make sure that you have all your like subject matter in the frame before you start this. We know if we look this side, we see this side of the face, we know there's gonna be another side of the face right here. We bring it across here, we can see this, we know this is coming, but EVSynth doesn't know that this is side of a face. It doesn't know that this is all part of one. It doesn't have context, it doesn't have any like human learning here. You have to be, able, be the one to put the keyframe data in there. So that being said, that leads us to point number four. Point number three is contrast. Having a large contrasty image helps a ton with this stuff. EVSynth uses two different things. It uses a keyframe, which is its baseline here, but then it also uses a video underneath it to kind of guide itself forward. Let's give an example real quick. Say for example, in this EVSynth, I did my hair pink, but my background's black, so the only thing that it can really tell in the normal video is that there's all this black around a white as can be ghost face. It can't really tell where that pink is supposed to go, but with this background, with it being green, with it being bright, with it having a contrast in there, it knows, oh, that pink goes on this black part on his head that's constantly moving around because you actually see where the hair is moving at that point. It's not just blending into the background. And the final point, point number five, is really just a quality of life change. And it's getting a green screen, doing it on a green background or doing it on a very solid background where you can just cut out everything behind you and you don't have to worry about the background being changed. Now, if you're doing something like the LSD effect I did last week, then you definitely want your background to be all LSD'd out too. You don't want your background to not be EV Synth while it's just you. But if you're wanting to drop your EV Synth character into the real world, say for example, I Vincent Van Gogh'd myself right now, I would be right here in the real world and I'd be Vincent Van Goghified. And that'd be really cool to see. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a green screen, it makes it a lot harder to do that because then you have to keyframe around the person. It makes it a lot more hard and tedious, and I don't want to do rotoscope anymore. And that's five tips to get better keyframes for EV Synth. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click that subscribe button down below, and right up here is a tutorial playlist for other EV Synth uploads I have. And right over here is a video that YouTube is suggesting for you guys. I don't know what that is. They don't ever show us what that is. It's all dependent on what you guys watch and what you guys like. So good luck with that. With that being said, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out, guys.